Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to take a closer look at my second favorite semiconductor company, AMD, currently sitting at $183. And on Monday, it ended the day up roughly 1.5%. So the stock is doing amazing. What I want to do is take a closer look at some recent news impacting overall AMD and some interesting finds on a recent SEC filing that has the internet kind of going crazy and wondering what kind of AI accelerator is AMD planning. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. So the first thing I want to take a closer look at is the internet. Nothing gets passed by them. So AMD recently released their, an annual report. And in that annual report, they mentioned an AI accelerator that we haven't heard about about before and that is the mi 388 x so obviously from the name we can see that it's part of the mi 300 series line and usually with every type of mi 300 there's like different variants right there's the mi 300 x um, which is a gpu only we have the mi 300 a which is the apu which is a mixture of a gpu and a cpu and now we have the mi 388 x so I, I found the report here but i wanted to go to the actual sec filing to see where they mention it so so they talk about the mi 388 x in only one encounter and that's when they were talking about chinese export regulations and for those that are not familiar the united states is preventing top chip companies here in the united states and other players to send ai chips that meet a certain threshold to China. So if they're too powerful, you can't send them over to China. So AMD mentioned in this report that with those regulations, they cannot ship the MI250, the MI300X, the MI300A, the MI388X, and integrated and, and some other kind of FPGA solutions like the VC2802 and the VE8. 2802. So first, right off the bat, I, I we've never heard of the MI388X. There's a lot of discussions going on online, but nothing too crucial. And probably we're going to hear a little bit more about it during their upcoming earnings. Maybe somebody might, ans might ask a question. But there's two things that have come up online that I found interesting. First is the MI388X. Obviously, we can see based on the name that it's part of the MI300X line, which is a GPU only uh, line, right? So this is going to be a GPU only line. Before we go any further, I just want to say thank you all for the amazing support we are getting in this channel. We're closing in to 40,000 subs. That is insane. So if you haven't and you are enjoying the content, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. Finally, if you want to support this channel a little bit more, check out my special offer at fool.com slash Jose. Now back to today's episode. So there's two ways about it. One, it can be an improvement of it. And the only main improvement that we're seeing right now with GPUs, especially when it comes to the same series or the same kind of architecture, is usually an improvement in memory. The MI300X uses HBM3. And right now we are seeing kind of the release of HBM3E. So the MI388X might be a version of the MI300X that increases, that has an increase in GPU and also could use that new, an increase in memory and can also use that new memory, the hbm 3e the other thing that we uh that i've been reading online is 88 um uh, or the 88 tends to be a lucky number in the eastern side of the world i'm not too familiar if that's true if it is feel free um to to let me know in the comments below so some are speculating that the mi388x might be a version of that that might be a, that they were trying to build to be shipped out to china um but unfortunately it seems like it did not meet the regulation needs i personally believe because the number is higher than the mi300x that it's most likely an updated version and the updated version is most likely going to push either more memory 
or a new form of memory like the HBM3E that I just previously discussed. So I hope to learn a little bit more about this and this is something we're gonna keep a closer eye out here in the AMD community for sure. The other thing I was just looking around um, this annual event and just kind of remember that, hey, the data center market, while it didn't grow much this year, still was up 7% year over year, even though most of the data center CPU market was pretty weak um, due to most investments going into AI GPUs. Um, but still, the company was able to grow about 7% in 2023 versus 2022. And they do mention that the primary higher sales were due to AMD Instinct GPUs and fourth generation AMD Epic CPUs. So pretty excited and definitely why we see that AMD has seen a nice run up in stock price in the past few months. In the last year, we saw up a nice double digits, right? In the past year, it's up nearly 90%. So those are the first few things I wanted to take a closer look at for AMD. The other thing that's kind of going on with AMD is we did see Lenovo, and it seems like one of the top players, the president of Lenovo of North America, did talk with CRN Magazine for an interview and discussed that there's huge demand for AI servers. And this is something that we've known about, right? We cover it a lot in this channel. AI servers are seeing a huge growth all around the map. So the president of Lenovo in North America mentioned that, hey, look, there's actually a huge demand for AMD Instinct MI300X accelerators as well. So that has the market excited, right? Because in the past, we continue to see that NVIDIA dominates this AI accelerator market and any form of hope that the MI300X can grab some form of market share is a great opportunity for this player. So AMD's, AMD investors are pretty, pretty excited about that. Lenovo also mentions that, hey, look, we actually are seeing just overall high demand and they're working with all types of players, right? They're working with NVIDIA, they're working with AMD, they're working with Intel. So if Intel's Gaudi 3 does pretty good, maybe we might even see a nice boost of AI accelerators for Intel as well, which can obviously help increase the overall stock price of Intel. So right now, still an AI market, still an AI accelerator market, supply constraint is still an issue. So we're seeing demand go pretty much to whoever has supply this does help amd in the long term right now and it does help with their software endeavors as well we know that amd is trying to battle nvidia's cuda um, with their rockham platform and one of the big things is to have just developers in those platforms to help develop new applications and develop new forms of workloads and right now with the supply chain is pushing those people that probably would have worked on NVIDIA to work on AM, AMD's AI accelerators, and it's gonna give them a reason to develop in those types of development process like Rockham, like I mentioned. So this supply constraint, while it's doing amazing things for NVIDIA, it's kind of creating um, a form of help for AMD as you're gonna get some push there, some market share growth there, that is going to help increase that ecosystem because of the supply chain constraints. Those are just my overall thoughts. Maybe I could be wrong by thinking it. Let me know in the in the thought in the comments below. But I think right now this is creating at least a little bit of help for AMD, opposed to if there was no supply constraint. I think everybody would just be rushing to a a Nvidia solutions right now. So now I just want to take a closer look at valuations. If you looked at my previous episode where I took a closer look at Intel's recent news, you might have already hear what. I'm about to say, but AMD, in my opinion, has a nice amount of growth opportunity with the MI300X, but that growth opportunity has already kind of stretched out valuations. I mean, if we look at PE ratio forward, it's 50.25. I'm not saying the business is bad, right? I believe in AMD. I believe in Lisa Su, but I believe the valuation is is getting a little bit too excited. Even if we look at forward one year, which is almost the next two years, AMD's PE ratio is 33.41. So I'm not here to sell any of my AMD shares. Like I mentioned, they have huge potential with the MI300X, even with their fifth generation CPU solutions as well. What I'm saying is they're form of valuation right now as an investor doesn't attract me to put new money in amd is already my second position um, but let me know in the comments below guys are you new to amd are you buying at these levels what do you think of valuation do you do you not see the stretchness am i just overthinking it right now um would definitely love to hear your thoughts i'm not an intel shareholder but i would say intel stock is starting to look a little bit 
attractive right now. And who knows, that might change in the upcoming um, quarters or in the upcoming weeks where I might be like, wow, I finally entered Intel. But we'll see. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care. Have a good day and see you all next time.